Welcome YouTubers. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about um, different systems, uh, different betting schemes, and I'm going to use wager minds because uh, it's just a good good arena to demonstrate what I'm talking about, bankroll, and, and how to evaluate some of the handicappers because sometimes absolute numbers um, can be segregated into something better when you're trying to figure out what handicapper to go with or what picks versus another. Um, as long as you're not too crazy with it. So let's get into uh, what bankroll is. I'm going to define bankroll as the amount of money you needed to start the season with in order to fully fund bets. And that doesn't mean you have to start start on day one, but if you know if you if you if you need to you know if you have a ten thousand dollar bankroll at the beginning and then you know you get through and you need to add another five thousand dollars, that is really the equivalent of having a fifteen thousand dollar at the start. Um, it's basically the maximum amount of money um, you put in personally um, and it includes what you need to pay every morning to fund the bets so um, I tend to do it as okay if let's say I had I started the season and the first day I needed three bets then and the bet each bet was a thousand dollars then you need three at that point you need three thousand dollars in bankroll uh, to fully fund those bets and if you go on and win or lose that day then the next day if you had another three bets you know if you were up if you were down a little bit, then you would need a little bit more than the three thousand. Because let's say you lost a hundred dollars the first day, then you would need thirty-one hundred dollars. And that's what I I do when I calculate what's the minimum bankroll you needed um, in the season to play this uh, handicappers picks. And it, that's what I mean when I count from negative and positive. If you went if you went positive that first day, then you you know the three bets wouldn't hit as much. Um, on the second day, the three bets wouldn't hit as much as the first day. Um, so whether you're winning or losing can can increase that along with the, the the amount of bets you do on a given day. So if you do a lot of bets, you'll need a higher bankroll. That's pretty pretty obvious, right? Um, but for me, bankroll represents you know your total actual investment you put into betting um, for that season. And and so you know if you take if you started with ten grand and and you never put any more than that in, and that's what you needed to fully cover your funds then at the end of the day you only put 10 grand in right i know each day you know might be making five thousand dollars worth of bets and you do that for 100 days and it's you know five million dollars or something like that but you didn't put five million dollars in you started with 10 grand and and that's what you put into uh, your investment just like buying a stock right you know just like anything else and so that's where i'm going to differ with roi versus bankroll um you know a lot of your um, software and software and betting software just says, Hey, if I made, you know, three bets today of a thousand dollars and I made a hundred dollars on it, then it's a hundred against $3,000 worth of bets. And the next day you do another 3000 and they do against $6,000 and it doesn't make any sense. Um, it'd be like the equivalent of buying a stock. Um, and then, and every day, you know, if the stock was a hundred dollars and you bought five shares, then day two, you treat it like another 500, like you're making, like you're buying a stock all over again. So each day, you know, you, you just don't do that. I mean, I, I know their software does it and you end up with this ridiculously low number. Um, when in fact, you know, you never put more than the $500 you started with in. So I, I tend to do ROI is the total net win loss for the season against the total maximum bank or minimum bankroll, whatever you needed, you know, to provide. Um, do it as a percentage. So if I, you know, if I ended up winning, um, you know, a thousand dollars that season, and at the beginning of the season I had a ten thousand dollar bankroll, then I'm going to say that I made, you know, a thousand dollars on a ten thousand dollar investment, and, and not go with that crazy ROI scheme, which is different to what you see in the software or what you see on, you know, Wikipedia or whatever. So you know, it's, it's very similar to putting a thousand, ten thousand dollars in stocks, and then the end of the, you know, in six months you end up with eleven thousand dollars. Well, you made a thousand dollars. Just treat it like that. Um, and that's the way I tend to calculate. So in order to do those calculations, uh, you know, you have to do a little research and, and log all your bets and then figure out if you're up or down. Um, but typically, the smaller the bankroll required, then the chance uh, is for a very large ROI, um, statistically speaking, because um, if you don't need a very big bankroll, you can always scale it up to what you need. And so let's say you you'd follow someone's betting system and they only needed like $3,000 um, to bet. Um, they were a real winner, let's say, you know, and and, and you had a ten thousand dollars. Well, you could just triple your amount of bets as long as the house is willing to take, you know, three thousand dollar bets instead of thousand dollar bets. Um, and you're you couldn't, you know, scale it in that regards. 
Uh, whereas if the opposite is true, if you need the full 10,000, you can't bet any more than 1,000 a game. And that's what you get. <coughs> so let me, um, let me jump out of this and go to our old friend uh, Wager Minders. Because this is, and I'm doing MLB. I'm going to do MLB for the current year, and we're not that far in. We're, in the, we're a couple months in, a little over a couple months into the season. And uh, some people are doing very well. Uh, I'm going to pick on my old, I, I just put a video out a week ago about the rise and fall of exclusive VIP sports. Well, he didn't play for a couple of days, and he's been on a tear. Been on a tear since then. I think he was at 66 when I last visited him. Now he's at 180, 175, and he's got a 14-game winning streak. So holy, holy mackerel, right? He's been, he's been, now, you know, back here he was more conservative, and I should do maybe MLB for this year, but I'm doing his entire light type line, so... You know, MLB for this year started about here. So he's been making a ton of bets, uh, which is going to lead to needing a very large bankroll, and it's going to diminish his uh, ROI potential. And that's what I'm trying to show here. So uh, what you need to do is you need to take his wager history, and I know he's got 2,000-plus bets out here, but you do more and more and more and keep going until you get back until the beginning of the MLB season. Then you're going to copy this. I'm going to copy it over to Excel. And when you copy it over to Excel, it looks something like this on the left here. You know, these are actually his games. Let me go to the top. So yesterday, you know, this, 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 and this is part of his 15. He's been winning 15 games, 14 game winning streak. Um, so I translated into this, and you can see here's his winning. So this is each one of these I had to translate into, you know, here's June 16th bets. So he had 11 bets out on June 16th. He won every single one of them. Um, for a total well this this is in, and, and very similar to that so this goes back and now that ends up being let me scroll to the bottom 514 roughly bets i know i didn't start exactly on yeah so 513 bets and then i'd post it over here and uh consolidate it by day so the first day of april um he bet uh, what you typically buy bet in wager mines is a unit of five uh, that's what most people pick because you can you can pick one through five but everybody just picks five gets they get you know you no use when you're flat betting you pick the maximum amount to get the highest you can so he made he really made three bets and he won four units on it but this is where i'm saying in order to fund those three bets he needed a bankroll of 15 um and three bets being 15 and so now he's up four dollars and the next day you know he only made one bet so he only needed 93 cents, you know, in bankroll. So I, again, it's the maximum, the, really it's the lowest number here as a, you know, the maximum negative or the, the minimum number overall is where your lowest bankroll. So here is lowest bankroll. He was winning, winning, winning. So he didn't need as much bankroll, even though he's making bets and he's way up here, you know, he's, so this is not, not negative. Even though he made a lot of bets, he made 45 units worth of bets, and he had a 40 starting balance. That only got him to minus 5, so he's still not at minus 15. But then he started taking a turn for the worse, had that big drop. And so out here he's making uh, roughly 175 units uh, worth of bets, and that took his um, funding needed. Uh, he had a, a negative 68 the day prior, negative 68 balance, and he made 176 units and bets so we needed 244 units in aggregate to cover that a little over to you know 245 actually and that was his low point now he's been winning like crazy you can see yet you know he's got the he's big big streak the last couple of days here as far as uh you know winnings but that's going to be as so far this season in the first two months um you would have needed 245 units um to cover and he's won 90 units so it's a nice you know 37 percent return you know if you if you had invested that 200 let's just call it 250 units whatever you want to call it um and you've got 90 back on it that's your return so he's been doing okay doing very very well and he's been up and down yin yang so if i if i multiply that by a factor um to get out to uh twenty thousand. Or I'm just multiplying this. I'm sorry. This is this is this is if I do this is if the this is with five dollar bets and this is with thousand dollar bets because I like to do thousand dollar bets. Um, so you would have needed 
fifty, almost fifty thousand dollars in bankroll, and you would have won eighteen thousand dollars if you just translate that up to thousand uh, um, dollar bets. I, I get it. again, he bets a lot, and if you factor that back down to twenty thousand dollar bankroll, which is another thing I like to do, thousand dollar bets with twenty dollar bankroll, um, then he would have won seventy three hundred dollars. So, you know, you can see just proportional, it is 37%. So basically, it's $50,000 you would need, and you would have won $18,000 so far on it. Or if you had a $20,000 bankroll, you would have won $7,400. So that's what, that's comparison number one. So I'm going to go out back to the year, and here's my Great Dane picks. I don't have as many pure dollars as exclusive VIP. He's killing me. Is he's almost got a hundred, and I've got sixty-five. So sometimes, I, like I said, this this I've done much less picks, and here's my, you know, here's my all history, and that included NBA. But you know, I've been plateauing. This is my cutoff. I do have a nice winning streak going. I don't have nearly as many picks as he does. But same types of thing. You copy it, and when I do that over here on mine. I get very, you know, I'm I'm only playing very select days. The first day I come out and won 16 units on a $15, so my bankroll was 15, uh, three bets basically. But I won $16 on those three bets because remember it's money line. You can win more than, you know, if you pick an underdog, you can win, I, you know, more than five units. And so my biggest negative has been 28. So I've needed, uh, you know, 30 units, and I've won 60 units so that's giving you a you know a 200 percent right you know type return instead of a 37 percent um, if you factor this up to 20 uh 200 times so a thousand dollars a bet i would have needed a six thousand dollar bankroll to be where i'm at and i would have won twelve thousand dollars so far or if you scale that to 20 i've won forty two thousand dollars so again here's the results of betting with exclusive vip picks which was you need a fifty thousand dollar bankroll you would have won eighteen thousand so far or if you had a twenty thousand bankroll the equivalent is you would have won seventy four hundred dollars and with me you would have needed um six thousand dollars at a thousand dollars a game and you've won twelve thousand you're making two hundred something percentage and if you had a $20,000 bankroll, you would have won, if you were betting on a $20,000 bankroll, so you could scale that up appropriately. So that's what, uh, you know, not quite, it's three, three, $3,500 a game or something. Then you would have won $42,000 so far. So that's how you can tell. I mean, there is a big difference. And I know I'm picking one. There's probably other people um, on that list. Um, but that's, you know, you do that. You have, to, you have to do all that work, evaluation one by one, to figure out, Sort of, you can almost do it by experience. Someone who's got really low experience, like this Maxim straight up, um, you know, someone who's got lower experience for a relatively good unit. Uh, and that should make sense to you, right? He's got a huge 66%. Let's see what Maxim straight up is. I'm not too familiar with that one. Um, and he's brand new. He's brand new. So we'll take a, a look at that, just like minor. Are brand new that's explained why it doesn't have any bets but it, sometimes you can go we get some some previous and they really stink um but that's how you can compare one to another you know this one's probably all right too but this one's gonna be let's just I, you know again i've got this filtered by mlb I'm, I'm just seeing if something pops up so yeah something popped up in their past so they didn't do so well in the nba or whatever they played hockey or nba this year um relatively flat in the the mlb so um just the way you can factor that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for your listening.